So yeah, I'm Carol Leone. I look really happy here because I was actually at IVHS standing in front of the big, big blowers for this, which was so fun. Very cool thing. So um, what I'm going to talk to you about is some of the things uh, that we've built since um, in the last couple of years. A um, little bit about fire in Sonoma County, programs we have in place opportunities, and especially thank you very much, Dave Shu. challenges that we've had and lessons that we've learned and how to move these ginormous projects forward. Okay, so about wildfire in Sonoma County. So between 1964 and 2016, long span, 50 years, right? We had like lost 71,000 acres, which is nothing in 50 years, right? 181 structures, woo, we do that before breakfast now. Between 2017 and 2020, the numbers jumped a bit, right? So we went from almost no structure loss to holy cow structure loss. Uh, most of my career was really spent in that before 2016 zone, when the idea that there was a wildfire problem in my county, frankly, was pretty like, oh yeah, right, uh-uh. There's an asbestos curtain around our county and it's never gonna come here, right? And it was, it's been very, very difficult in that period. It was really hard to get your feet under you. Sonoma County has almost no federal land. So we also had a real challenge with getting, you know, finding funding because there really wasn't much here to, to, very little fire history, very little fund, you know, federal land is a problem. Next. So that all changed overnight in 2017 with the Sonoma complex, which was five different fires, including the tubs that we've heard a lot about today. Um, but what's really this, you know, that was the day that everything changed. Um, but what we're looking at is, you know, entire homes and neighborhoods devastated, right? Firefighters, folks who work for Kaiser, everybody who had some role in that nightmare, working overtime, beating themselves to death, trying to help their communities, while at the same time they're broken and have lost their homes. And it's been really tough. And then that happened, and then another fire, and another fire. Oh, and all the smoke from the campfire. It's been a whirlwind that I can't possibly begin to describe the impacts of that on our community and all of our folks. Um, we have to find a way to circle this up. We have to find a way that we can have fire because we're gonna have fire here, flat out. How do we have fires without having conf conflagrations and enormous losses? How do we do that? How do we move our county to action, let alone the whole world, when you get right down to it, right? We're all kind of facing up against the same thing. And let me tell you, it's a heck of a challenge. Much bigger one than I thought it was in 2018 when I sat down at my computer and started writing grants because I was going to save the world, right? I have a different attitude now. So, well, I, I'm still interested in that, but we'll get to that. So, on the opportunity side, sort of along with the disaster declarations come, dun dun run, bunches of federal funding. Yay, we've never had that before. And so we got to work and started writing grants. Um, based on the principle that we basically have two ways of handling this problem. We can handle it from the house out, which is structure hardening and defensible space, which truth to be told is really where my heart is and where most of my work has been focused for 20 years. And then we can also do it through landscape in, right? Building fuel breaks around communities, helping to slow or stop the advance of wildfire. So all of my grants sort of had this in the background. Next slide. And we did pretty well straight out of the gate, right? We're now up to about $62 million on the ground to do a combination of these things in various ways. And we're in the process of moving all of these forward and boy, are there some lessons learned there. Next slide. So, whoops, oh, this is supposed to be animated and all the animation is gone. Um, if you can kind of, you know, we've got basically three programs in place. Um, the Wildfire Adapted Program uh, has 14 tar target communities where we're doing 
defensible space and structure hardening assessments. And then in phase two, reference slow train to money with federal programs. We'll be offering a $10,000 rebate incentive to property owners to get recommended work done on their homes. So that's 14 project areas across the county. We also at the same time wrote a, 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 a more um, wildland focused grant. So we're also working on um, wildland fuels reduction project simultaneously. And then we wrote a very large brick grant for building resilient infrastructure and communities um, to do more of the same again. And I'll be describing those moving forward. Next. So my agency, I work for the most popular agency in Sonoma County. We're, we're trying to help. And you know, one of the things I've learned is that people who are in the fire footprint do not hate my agency because my agency really worked hard to do things right after the fire. Um, people on the outside, maybe they forgot to get a permit for this or that or the other thing. So there's, you know, not as much trust generally for this agency, which is a challenge that I'm having to face up to and begin to try to work around, right? But the point I'm trying to make with this slide is that these grants are a really big lift and we have a really big staff which is still growing as we're realizing how many people we need. So if you have any ideas that maybe this is something you want to try, staff up early and often or you will end up like me. I'm actually 25. Next. So our first grant, Wildfire Adapted Sonoma County. Um, this is a house out program only, so we're not dealing with the wildlands with this one. We're just doing defensible space and structure hardening, and how we're doing that is, um, there's actually two grants here, which are both phased, it's complicated, but um, what we're doing is assessments. So we're sending folks out into the field to do defensible space assessments using applicable code, either local or state, depending on where they are, with the idea that, hey, Y'all, this is what they're going to be asking when they come in and do a real inspection. This is an assessment, hence the carrot. This is entirely a carrot program. Um, we are not throwing code on this program at all. Um, and the, those assessments, both structure, um, defensible space and structure hardening. The structure hardening, we have contracted with Dave and Ivan and Wildfire Defense Works and Wooey to do those for us, which has been awesome. They're hitting it out of the park. But those assessments and the findings from those assessments form the basis for the cost share incentive program that'll be rolling out sometime next year or so. We're also doing the preliminary environmental review and planning during this phase of the grant. A little more on that later, but be ready. So phase two will be our rebate incentives, so that's when we'll be Having property owners implement by hiring and paying a contractor, um, and then we'll provide them with a $10,000 rebate to get the work done. We're also working with our local, it's sort of a PACE program called Skype to sort of help people who can't afford to pay up front and yada, 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 but um, that's, that's the idea anyway. Next. So the environmental review, which we've just started working on, I, I really have this slide in here just as a Yo, be ready for this. This is tough. Federal funds, NEPA and CEQA, right? And there's um, a lot of complex analysis that go into ensuring that these programs are not going to do irreparable harm to the landscape. And so there, the demands are intense. The field seems to shift quite a bit on what we do or don't have to do. But um, be ready for this process. We've built this awesome tool here, um, which has like 15 enviro screens in it and all kinds of stuff that we can use. It's a GIS-based thing that we can use in the background to sort of look at, ooh, where do we think the red flags are going to be? We've just sent our first area off to um, OES, Cal OES and FEMA, um, to start looking at how the review is going to go in the field. But do be ready for this. Next. So. The next, the next problem, the um, landscape in program, um, which is the Sonoma County Hazardous Fuels. Next. 
So this is not focusing on homes, but it's only focusing on ridge tops, roadsides, the areas that we most need to remove horrible fuel from. Um, it's the crosshatched areas within this map, which is also the fire history, which not surprisingly are coincident. So we're really trying to reduce um, fuels in the burned over areas and generally keep this from happening again. So that one is also underway at the same time, um, using a variety of means to reduce those fuels. Next. So where this all came together for us was with what we call the, the brick grant. It actually has a name, no one uses it. We all call it the brick grant. Um, Wildfire Resilience Sonoma County. And this is where we're bringing the whole thing together. So we combine these two approaches. We're doing near home, defensible space, and fuel breaks around communities, along with a whole lot of education outreach and research to really start to figure out how do we make this generational change happen on the landscape. Next. So yeah, simultaneously in implement these strategies so that we can have fire, but we don't necessarily have horrible, life-changing disasters every other year, whether we need one or not. Next. So these are the project areas for that brick grant. There are three large project areas. Within the, um, the uh, brown marks in the middle, um, that's where the near-home defensible space areas are. And then the green areas surrounding them, that's where the wildland treatments will go, which we will try to get on the grant to slow uh, to, to slow or stop the advance of fire into those communities. So that's the plan. There are about 10,000 parcels in here, um, which is a pretty heavy lift from an inspection standpoint, right? Because improved, unimproved, they all get an assessment. Um, and we're really going to be building up our outreach and education um, because that's been our biggest lesson learned from the last one. Big grant, lots of money, lots of focus, kind of intimidating, frankly. Next. So, right? There's two things that I can tell you about doing this work. It's going to take a really, really, really long time, right? And it's going to cost a whole barrel of money, right? This is a really expensive, long-term project that we're looking at here. And achieving this resilience on an individual home, to people, community, statewide level, this is, thank you, Dave, not a sprint. This is a marathon. And we are in the very first stages of this race. And so it's, sometimes it's really hard not to be frustrated by how slowly it's working and how complicated it is. And everybody hates me, and nobody wants to do what I want them to do. But we're in the early stages of this run, right? And I really keep hope, just keep moving forward. Because I believe that we can do this. I just think it's going to take a while. And maybe a couple more disasters. Next. So some of the significant challenges we've faced, and there have been you know, quite a few. Um, when I wrote this in 2017, everybody was begging, oh, please, please, help us make all of this happen. We need the help. We need the help. Well, as time has gone on, right? <laughs> Laughing, knowing laughter over there. As time has gone on, People are forgetting, even when we have a fire this year. You know, since we haven't had a Lollapalooza like we had in 17, there's not quite as much like, holy cow, I'd better do something or that's going to happen to me. So keeping the enthusiasm moving forward is hard. Retrofit is not driven by regulation, right? We don't have codes that say, you have to have these good vents. We only have that in new construction. So retrofit is not only difficult, expensive, and psychologically challenging, it's also it's not something that I can pick up the stick and use that, right? So we have to move them by convincing them that this is important. And that is hard, as it turns out. Code compliance, enormously complicated, not only from the standpoint of, I don't want you looking at my house, because half of it was built without a permit, right? That's a problem. And it's a raft of issues. OK, I'm going to help you by replacing your windows with wooey windows, except the bedroom window is too small for current code. So now am I going to force them to have the bigger window that complies with code? 
and how is all that going to work? It's enormously complicated. Um, how much should we tell them? Um, Dave, Dave and Ivan's report has, is it 30 items? We have 30 places on there where, oh, you got to fix that, up, oh, you got to fix that, up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh. And we're constantly going back and forth because when you give someone a report that has 30 things on it that they've done wrong, they're not jumping up and down and all enthusiastic, right? But this is a complex science. Home retrofit is not easy. It's site specific. It depends on how many trees there are over there. What's the slope? Where are you in reference to the wind? So how much can we dumb down this information and still get it across? It's a real challenge and we're really working on that. We're actively working on that all the time. Demographics, huge challenge with all of these, right? How do we get to low income communities? And you know, how do we get them to talk to us? One of the things I'm really realizing is that I'm getting way better traction in the wealthier communities than I am in the poor communities. I think mostly because of the code issue, right? So how do we circle that up? That's one of the things we'll really be working on with the BRIC funding. People at this point, you know, it used to be that you'd say, okay, what's gonna burn your house down? And they'd go, that park down the road, I hate that park. Well, now, when you ask that question, I find that what they do is they do say, I have to harden my house and have defensible space. That's progress. But what I'm really finding where the rubber hits the road, they're saying those words and going, look, I got the right answer. I'm so cool. But when it comes to cutting that shrub out of their zero to five, I don't think that we've moved from acceptance to adoption. I don't think we're adopting it yet. We, we know the right answer, teacher, but we don't really think it applies to us somehow. And so we, that's a big hurdle to get over. And we need Dr. Freud to help us with all this. Next. So these are a huge lift, and I'm not going to beat this to death, but you need a lot of subject matter expertise. Um, in grant management, accounting, I cannot overemphasize that side of it. The administrative side of running federal grants is, it's a heavy lift. And you need a lot of expertise on the ground to make sure that you're hitting all the marks, you can spell CFR, and you're moving forward correctly. So do not underestimate who you're going to need. Defensible space, regulation, structure hardening, it's changing all the time. Who has time to stay up with that? You need all of that to keep these going forward. Um, environmental, cultural, historical review, holy cow, right? Um, building community trust and relationships, this honestly has been my biggest learning point. When I wrote these grants, everybody wanted them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go, let's go. But when it comes to implementing them, it's really hard to get them to even to sign up for the awesome structure hardening assessment that they can get from us for free. And so that's trust building and that takes time and money and energy. And so a lot more of, our, of my focus is gonna go into that outreach side of the next project, the BRIC, when we start moving that one forward here really soon. And working a lot more with groups like FireSafe Sonoma to help us do that. Let's get down onto the community level Help us, help us, help us. Local fire districts, I'm actually going to start hiding behind them. So I'll be using the local fire districts to do the assessments with their uniforms. No one will ever know. So um, yeah, you just need a whole lot of staff, contractors, collaborators. Be ready for it. Is there another one? I can't remember. Oh, opportunities, right. We have to end on a positive note. So, you know, we, we do have their attention, right? When I, 10 years ago, this group didn't exist, right? We were born during the fires. I went to a conference last year that was all about structure hardening, nothing else. That was so cool. So we've really come a long, long way, right? We're really, we do have a lot more in place. Um, we have a lot more research going on, the work of IBHS, CAL FIRE, everybody is manning up to deal with this project. So we have their attention. Lots of new fire safe councils. Agencies all over the state are much more prepared. Fire prevention's getting a lot more 
a lot more attention than it used to. Um, we're, you know, insurance companies. I, I deal with a lot of painful phone calls. Well, you did to cancel me. I deal with that a lot. And that's hard because people are freaked out about losing their insurance. And there's so much of that going on now. But at the same time, the insurance companies, I think, are going to be the ones who are really going to impact this change at the end of the day. Because I can't do it through regulation. If I can't reach out to that guy and get him on my side, I can't do anything. The insurance companies have no such scruples. They can make it happen because they really have to make it happen, right, in order to keep that model alive. And so we do have excellent opportunities moving forward, but there are a lot of challenges. I think that's it. Oh, final thought. I don't ever, ever want to get my camera out and take this picture again. This is really what drives me at the end of the day, right? Coffee Park 2017. Whoops! Who would have thunk? And uh, I don't want to do this again. I'm done with that. So that's what drives me, and I hope drives the rest of you. So this is me. This is my partner, Misha. Um, there's our stuff. Happy to speak to anybody, especially as we move the brick forward. I'm wanting that brick to be an all-hands approach, right? I want to work with all you. I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. All the people I've heard here today, I would love to have conversations with. So please reach out, and there we have it.